Well, hello, I hope you are ready. We are getting together today and talking about all things beginner scrapbooking, scrapbook 101. So I'm just making sure that I'm getting set up here, looking good. I already see some gals coming in like Ruby from Colorado. Welcome, welcome everybody as they roll in. Uh, I am Noreen Smith. I'm the product development creative manager here at Creative Memories. And you may have seen me in some other um, live streams and videos here in the Virtual Crop Facebook groups, Creative Memories Virtual Crop Facebook group and on the virtual, no, sorry, and on Creative Memories YouTube. But I'm always excited to be with you no matter where I am. And this series, Scrapbook 101, we broadcast it the last Friday of every month at noon central time. So this is actually our second Scrapbook 101. And if you missed the first one, you'll definitely want to head over to the YouTube channel. That's the easiest place to find them and look for the Scrapbook 101 playlist and they'll all be listed there. Okay, so if you missed being with us last time, that's the easiest place to find us. Uh, good morning, everyone. I think it's morning on the West Coast still, of course, afternoon on the East Coast, and it's tomorrow in uh, Australia and New Zealand. So hello, everyone, wherever you're coming in from. We've got Florida, New Mexico, Boston, everybody all over the place. It's always great to be with you no matter where you're joining us from. So today I want to talk about colors and themes and patterns and all of the beautiful fun stuff that makes scrapbooking uh, so much fun. But again, if you did not join us last time, you will want to go and watch that because I gave you some homework actually. Your first piece of homework was to make sure that you had joined the Creative Memories Virtual Crop Facebook group. And many of you are watching there here now, but if you're still just over on the YouTube channel, make sure you come and join us on the uh, Facebook group as well, the Virtual Crop Facebook group, because there's always lots of inspiration in that group. And if, if I know anything about beginner scrapbookers is they want ideas, right? They want to see some ideas. They want to figure out what can I do? What can I replicate? And then when they see something they like, they're so excited to recreate that. So definitely join the Virtual Crop Facebook group for tons and tons of inspiration. And then the second piece of homework that I gave you was to actually start thinking about projects that you want to get started with. So some of you may have been introduced to scrapbooking you know, by a Creative Memories advisor. Some of us years ago remember Creative Memories home classes. Uh, you may have attended a beginner class. You may have, you know, dabbled in scrapbooking on and off throughout the years and somehow found your way back to Creative Memories, found your way here to us, and we are thrilled. And again, it's, it's one of those things like, where do you start? So you might decide to start with a specific project, like a trip that you've taken, or maybe your wedding photos or your children's, you know, school years or baby photos. And those kinds of themes are, are fairly easy to, to kind of sort out and organize. You know, you, you have a topic and you can go ahead and find those, those products that will work with it. We're going to talk about some of the themes that Creative Memories offers in just a minute. But what, one of the things I want to focus on today is what if you don't have a theme? What if you've come across some photos, especially if they're kind of the everyday photos that don't seem to have a theme? It's just family photos, photos maybe that you're taking, you know, when you're out and about in your community, or maybe you just have, you know, one or two from um, a, a small event or, you know, a, a funny sort of picture of maybe one of the things your kids does. Uh, so we've got all of these different kinds of photos and sometimes we just don't know how to get started with those scrapbook pages, how to choose the theme, how to, you know, pick the colors, pick the products, pick the, pick the papers that will work with those. So that's what we're really going to focus on today. And I have to sort of apologize in advance because I noticed that there was a few comments last time that our, our scrapbook 101s were a little bit long. It was, it was pretty much an hour in length. And I apologize, but there's just so much information that I can share with you. 
Um, and since we only meet once a month, I hope that you'll indulge me. And even if you find that this is too much to watch in one sitting, I hope you'll come back to it, maybe watch it in 15 or 20 minute chunks, okay? So apologies in advance if we go a little bit long. There, this is such a big topic and we want to try and condense it so that you can find it all in one place. Okay, so again, apologies if we run long. Um, I think the best thing to do is I'm going to actually uh, flip you over to my screen and also to my table. And we're going to talk about where to start with the idea of themes. Okay, so let's go to my table first. And I want, to, I want to talk about two tools that I think every scrapbooker should have, um, and you may not think of them as tools. One is our scrapbook, or sorry, our catalog, the Creative Memories Catalog, because this really was designed as a tool for scrapbookers of all levels. So it's not just a catalog of products that are available for sale. Um, there is no way that we can, you know, put all of the products that we offer in the catalog. But what we have done is we've made it a reference tool for you. And we've got things like book cloth overviews. We've got um, all of our card stocks listed. And then at the back here, this is something that I think beginner scrapbookers who are looking to how to choose a theme this would be a great place to start. And then we're gonna look on the website to see where you can uh, find the same kind of information because our website is another great tool. Okay, so when you look, this is page 46 of the catalog and it's actually called Coordinating Cardstock. And the, the idea behind this page was to list coordinating cardstock and coordinating collections for each of the collections that were brought forward, um, that were available last year and brought forward into this year. But I think it's a great place to start when you are looking for ideas for your themes. So as you scan this page or these pages, you're gonna see a variety of different types of layouts. And I don't want you to focus on the layouts, but I want you to focus on, you know, kind of the theme or what the layout is about. So we've got school, Croptoberfest, which is kind of a fall theme, Devotion, which is wedding, Endless Meadows, which is spring, Golden Harvest, which is fall, Happy Hauntings, Halloween, Leave Nothing Behind, which is an outdoor collection, Lullaby Lane is baby, and then of course we've got, you know, winter, and we've got Christmas, and we've got tropical, and we've got colors, we've got travel. So there are just a ton of ideas right here on this page. So this might be a good place to start if you are thinking, hmm, I don't know kind of what, what theme I want to focus on. And again, some of the themes are easy. So if you're working with your wedding photos, you might want to get the devotion collection which of course is wedding themed. And then you can see what other collections might work with it and what uh, coordinating cardstock you might want to get. If you're doing a travel, uh, you know, a special trip, you might want to look at the Wanderlust, which is the travel collection that we currently have. And again, you've got some other suggestions there. So this is a great place to look. But let's also look, and I'm just going to switch you over here now to the computer. And I'm just going to, sorry, I'm just going to have to move my computer so I can actually see it in front of me. But when you're on the main web page, I want you to think of this as a tool as well. So one of the things you can do is go to shop, and then you can see over at the side here, we've got themes. So as you scroll down, you can see that there's a variety of different themes uh, kind of listed there for you. And they are alphabetical, so just keep scrolling until something pops out at you. So there's baby, birthday, blue, so you can even think in terms of color. Uh, bring back, that's kind of a, an unusual theme in terms of titles of a theme, but these are collections that were so popular we brought them back again. Camping, Canada, Christmas, coastal. So again, if you're out on the coast, you're out, uh, you know, um, walking around a, a seaside town or on the beach uh, that's maybe not a tropical beach, coastal might work. 
Uh, if you're documenting COVID, you might want to go back in there and have a look. So you can have a look at all of the themes. And then when you, uh, let's go to, um, let's go to spring. Okay. So if you've got pictures of your, you know, your spring garden, there we go. It's coming up now. Um, these, the things that will pop up there when you, when you touch on spring will be all of the kind of the current spring related products. And you can see that there's lots and lots of different, uh, colors. Uh, there's suggestions for album covers. There's suggestions for tools. There's suggestions for cardstock that coordinates, etc. So that, um, shop themes is a great place to look if you are trying to figure out what, um, what theme or what products might go with a theme that you are thinking about. Now I want to show you one other tool that I use all the time on this, on this, uh, on our website. And that's again, under the shop. And I just simply go down here to papers and embellishments. And I actually just scroll through the designer paper packs. And for me, I'm very visual and I'm very kind of focused on color. So we're going to talk about starting with our photos in just a minute. But when I first look at my photos and I identify some of the colors that I want to use, just scrolling through all of these paper packs, I can start to kind of isolate and look for colors. So if I'm looking for blues, for example, I see this cue the blue. I see a uh, totally tonal baby blue here. I noticed that this uh, particular uh, one above had some blue. When I look at it, it's New York, so I can kind of rule that out for maybe the theme that I'm using. But I can keep scrolling down and I can kind of look at very easily and identify some of the products that would work. Here's another beautiful blue tone. So vivid melodies, Capri blue. And I see blues in this collection here and which is Washington and the U S of yay. So I've got lots and lots of choices when I look visually, uh, for different papers. Here's some soft blues in the serenity pack. So if you're looking for ideas to match your photos, Definitely remember to come in, and I think the easiest place to look is the paper pack um, category on the website. So think of that as a tool, not just as you know a place to look to see what's for sale, but as a tool to think about what might work best with my photos. I have many of these collections, so I can just quickly scan through and I can say, oh, right, I forgot that Serene Waters vellum paper had those beautiful watery blues. I can use that. Or if I'm scrolling down here further um, and I see the Scrap Happy, those blues might work better. So it's a really great way to sort of think about where can I find uh, an easy place to look for themes and colors and patterns. So don't forget those two very important tools. And I did see a comment. What was the book that I was referring to? And it's the Creative Memories catalog. Can you see that? <laughs> and if you don't have an advisor, you can order one of your uh, a copy for yourself on the Creative Memories website. But definitely check with your advisor. Often, if you'll go to events uh, with an advisor, with a local advisor, they'll have copies for you. Um, as part of, you know, your, your registration fee, or you can certainly ask for a copy, uh, or order yourself a copy online. Okay. So two overlooked tools to find themes and colors and patterns, the website and our catalog. Okay. So that's a good place to start. So once you've looked at your photos and you've sort of said, okay, yeah, I want to do a wedding album, then you can go in and look a little bit more closely at the supplies you might want to look for uh, and purchase. You can also then start, once you've got your theme sort of selected, you can also start looking for inspiration ideas. Okay. That's another, another topic, right? Where to find inspiration, how to start, you know, your pages, that kind of thing. But getting that theme uh, sort of solidified is the first thing. Now I did mention that uh, I would encourage you to start with photos. And where did I put my photos? I put my photos here. So many of us don't think about actually printing our photos until we're, you know, until we sit down and we're ready to scrap one. So I encourage you to get in the habit of actually printing your photos 
or if you want to sort of do it all online before you know before you print your photos you want to determine what which photos you want to use which theme you want to cover that kind of thing then definitely make sure that your monitor is um, you know calibrated for, for a good color so that you can see the true colors in your photos sometimes when we get them printed they do appear different so I, I like to start with my printed photos for that reason, because maybe the printed uh, color, you know, here's, here's maybe a Christmas photo. So maybe the printed colors in this are going to be different than what it appeared on my screen. So this way I know that the printed photos that I'm going to be placing on my page, I can see what the colors are and then I can have a look at the products that I want to match. So printing your photos for your project is always a good thing. Now, let's talk about color, and I don't want this to be, uh, you know, a full-blown color theory lesson, but we do need to know a little bit about color when we're scrapbooking. And if only to sort of know what works together, how colors relate to each other, and then perhaps even make a decision not to use color. Okay, so I'm going to flip you back over to my table here. Let's get back over here. And we're going to talk about color and photos. So I just I just showed you this one. These are my two sons, some old Christmas photos. So when I have my printed photos next to me and I'm looking at them and I'm looking either at, you know, the catalog or I'm pulling supplies, that's the best way to really sort of figure out what's going to work with this. Now, here's, you can tell, I think, from these pictures here that it's Christmas, okay? We can see Santa in the background. They've got their red shirts on. They've got stockings in the background here. So these are, you know, these are Christmas photos that I want to work with. And I can see right off the bat that I've got a lot of reds. So I'm on the cardstock page now in the catalog, page 18. And this features all of our cardstocks, our solid mill, uh, solid core mill run cardstocks, as well as our shimmers. So I can see right away that, you know, probably some of these reds, maybe this firecracker shimmer paper, uh, you know, some blacks, some browns and neutral colors. I don't see much in the way of oranges or blues. So looking at your photos next to a color chart, a color wheel, your physical paper, all of that kind of stuff is a great way to start working with, um, start identifying the colors. So let's take a look now a little bit at the idea of color theory. I mentioned that these are all of our colors and I've gone ahead and I've punched out a little piece of cardstock with our two, three and one, not just two and one, three and one bevel tag punch. And then I've just made a little swatch. And I know many of you who are CM advisors have done this before. It is such a handy thing to pop onto, you know, your, uh, leave it on your desk while you're scrapbooking, hang it up on a hook nearby, put it onto, you know, your tote that you take with you. Uh, that's a great way to keep all of your cardstock colors handy. The other thing, of course, you could do is, you know, cut out a little swatch of each, a little card of each. I've got little, I think, about one and a half inch squares here. And just put them on uh, a piece of cardstock with some repositionable adhesive. So that way, if we have more cardstock down the road, uh, if you have other card stocks that you want to add in, you can rearrange them. And you're probably noticing that I have them arranged in a certain way. Now, I'll just tell you that I was an art teacher for many, many years. I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree and I think in terms of color. So I think in terms of rainbow colors so much that actually I'm going to pop you back here behind me, you can see that my cardstock is all arranged here in what we call Roy G. Biv or rainbow order, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. That's Roy G. Biv. Indigo is in there as well. But uh, So th that's the color, uh, the rainbow color. So I think in terms of rainbow color so much that I have my, you know, my papers, my pens, uh, even my closet is organized in this way because it's just the way I think. So I've got my kind of red tones here, my orange and yellows, 
my greens and they go into the green blues, my blues and my purples. And if you're wondering, if you ever look at a color and kind of think, you know, is that more green? Is that more blue? Uh, a color wheel is a good thing to have. Now, this is just one I picked up off the internet when I was searching for uh, color wheels. I like this one because it's simple and it shows that there can be varying shades. So when you have pink, we have a very soft pink, that's going to be more in this sort of range. Uh, it's not a deep, deep pink. It's more of a soft pink. Same with, we've got a couple different oranges. So one of our oranges is a darker one. One of them is lighter. Same with our blue greens. Okay. We've got Island waters in that blue green, and then we have a very deep sea green. So it just kind of reminds us that there can be light and dark shades of the colors. Now, that's all the color theory I want to do with you, but I just want to point out as well that a color wheel is an excellent tool for when you're trying to figure out color schemes. So remember when I said, okay, I've identified some of the colors in here, so I know that I want red. So I've got red and cranberry, and I'm just going to pull out a couple little pieces as well. So I've got red. And I've got cranberry. I mentioned that there was some brown in there, maybe black. I could go black if I wanted to. These got out of order when I, when I moved them around. I don't know where my black is. But maybe I would put black in there. Maybe I'd put beige in there. Okay. And then the other thing that I might want to add in is a little bit of green, just because we've got that little bit of green in here. So I can go in and look at my greens. I could either pull the dark green or the Kelly green, and I can actually see that some of the green that's in my photo is that brighter green. So there I have my color palette. Now, if I didn't have these little chips here, I could definitely look on my color wheel and say, okay, I've got some reds, um, I've got some browns. Now, neutrals aren't on the color wheel, so I would just kind of note that. But, you know, one of the things that works really well with red is green. So I can look at the color wheel and kind of have a look and see where which color of green would work best. So whether you choose to use a color wheel, whether you choose to make some little swatches of all of the colors that uh, you have of cardstock, you know, either way, or you choose to just have a look at the catalog cardstock colors, that's a great way to come up with your palette for a particular uh, grouping of photos. Okay, so let's do a couple more. Christmas is kind of easy because we always think of red and green, but let's look at a couple more. So here's a couple of pictures from the mountains close to where I live. This is up in Jasper National Park. And right away, we kind of look and we see, okay, some blues and some greens. Well, let's put down some blues. There's baby blue, navy, and baby blue, uh, blue, which, which used to kind of be called the royal blue, or which I think of as a royal blue, and navy. So when I look at that, I definitely see that there's this color of blue. The other ones, not so much. So let's pull that away. I've got some green. So again, I'm going to pull out my two greens, and I like that dark green, but now I've got this kind of turquoise. So I'm going to pull out a couple of different colors. This isn't exact, but maybe both of these would go well uh, in my color palette. And then I've got a little bit of this kind of pinky purple down here, so I can either pull my purple ice, my eggplant would work, or my soft pink. Okay? So... I can look at my pictures and match up some of the color cardstock that I want to use. Then I can also go back. Remember, we were looking at this sheet for our themes. I can also go back here and look to see if any of these collections have some of those colors in them. Okay, so getting used to kind of identifying the colors that are in your photos, that helps a lot. 
I'm going to set these two aside here because we're going to talk about black and whites for in a minute. All right, what do you do when you've got a variety of different colors? So these are pictures from uh, one of my son's kind of, you know, junior high graduations. And so we've got some red, we've got some orange, we've got browns and grays, we've got green and blue, we've got a brighter turquoise here. How do you choose something that will work well? So at that point, instead of, you know, thinking about all of the different cardstock colors that I might pull out. I might choose to look at the dominant. Now, you're gonna to have to trust me on this one because I can't really show you how to do this. But what I would do is I would look at these photos and I would squint. Okay, so I try to get, you know, as many of the distractions away. And I know this sounds weird, but I want you to kind of squint at the screen. And I want you to kind of try to identify which colors you see the most of. And for me, I'm seeing kind of these brown tones and then this color, uh, this kind of uh, orangey, peachy sort of color jumps out at me the most. So squinting, what it does is it narrows the amount of light going into your eyes and it allows you to sort of see the darkness or lightness of colors and the brightness or deepness of colors. So in this case, the brightness of this area really stands out to me. And then, uh, and then I think secondly, the red, I don't really have to worry too much about that orange color. And even this blue, you know, it doesn't show it in my field of vision. It doesn't quite pop out as much as it does when I'm looking at the photo itself. So squint at a grouping of photos and you might be able to identify. So for this one, I would probably go ahead and use some neutrals, some, uh, you know, a collection with the greens and the browns. I might go into something like the leave nothing behind because it has a lot of greens, maybe the golden harvest because I know that it has some, uh, you know, nice kind of reds and oranges that might pick up these colors really well. Uh, I might even go to something like the, um, the wanderlust just because there's a, a lot of neutrals in there, some grayed down tones. So some of that, some of those tricks might help you identify what, um, papers, themes, collections that you want to choose. Okay. All right. We are going to make, um, a layout with some photos that I have here. Okay. We're going to use these photos here in just a minute. So we're going to actually look at picking our individual papers with that. But I just want to talk about two more quick things really, really fast. Now I've, here, I've got a couple photos here of my husband and I, they were taken years apart. They're not in the same place. We look a little bit different. We're not wearing the same thing. And people will often ask, well, how do you choose something, uh, a theme, a color palette, papers, etc., when, you know, you've got these disparate photos? They don't go together, really. The only commonality is that it's my husband and I. So that's what I want you to look for when you don't think that you have, you know, a, a specific color scheme. If you can't identify a theme or a color scheme, I want you to look for commonalities. So the commonality, of course, in this case is the people. You might also have commonality of place. Uh, there might be some different patterns or images in the background. Maybe they're both set against trees, for example, even though they're different places. Or maybe the, the theme here is, you know, like love or marriage or friendship. So those kinds of things that you look for common elements in disparate photos, that might help you narrow in on... Um, on a theme, a color scheme, or the products that you want to use. So for something like this, I might go ahead and pull, you know, because of, it does have some, you know, some blue tone colors there. So I might go back and look on the website. Remember we had lots of different blues. I might even pull something like Polar Lights, even though it's a winter themed 
uh, scrapbook collection. It's got some of those nice blues in it and kind of, you know, the reflection on his glasses are kind of bluey turquoise. So I could look for colors. I could look for, uh, you know, a sweetheart or Valentine themed collection. I could just go ahead and use some cardstock. So once you've identified a few of the commonalities, that's when you can start going in and finding themes. I might use the wedding collection because I know that there's going to be, um, you know, themes of love, um, you know, together forever, something like that. So look for commonalities in disparate photos. All right. And then the last thing I want to talk about is no color. So this is a photo of my son at the hospital. Uh, he just had surgery and a nurse was helping him uh, walk down the hall. Super bright colors in the hallway. I think she was wearing bright orange. He was wearing like a, mis a mismatched tracksuit sort of thing. Um, I felt it was an important photo to take because it was showing his journey, but it all of the colors really distracted me. And I knew that when I wanted to uh, to scrapbook that, I didn't want to be distracted by the colors. So I printed it in black and white. Same thing here, and I have to apologize, I don't have the rest of the photos from this, but I printed this photo of my son and I in black and white, again, because I wanted to use it in um, kind of a spread about my son and the, these colors did not go with the other pictures that I wanted to use. So don't be afraid to print your photos in black and white. And that way you can use any, you can use any colors with it. You know, I could put it with the, the nice warm, you know, reds and yellows, or I could put it with the cool, you know, greens and blues. So when you print in black and white, you can really choose any kind of colors and themes. And the last thing I want to say about colors is don't be afraid to use plain scrapbooking materials with your colorful photos. Okay, so we are going to, as I mentioned, I'm going to use these photos here. These are of a camping trip when my older son, same one who was in this photo here <laughs> many, many moons ago. Um, he, you know, this was his first time out and about camping. So I've got some photos here and they're beautiful photos, but look at all of the different colors. So maybe I just want to put them onto a white page. Truly, maybe I just want to get them down onto a page. Maybe I will crop them down a little bit and let the white background just really make the photos sing. Of course, we've got other options beside white. We could do the same thing on the black. Okay, maybe I just move these over and overlap them a bit just to show you. But So it looks a little bit different on black, but a very, very classic look. And the colors really pop now. We also have beige. That's another great neutral to put your photos on. And these are three card stocks that I pulled. The black, the white, and the beige are just, you know, 12 by 12 inch card stock. Okay, so I could just go ahead and arrange my photos on the beige and that kind of tones down the photo. So it, it's a little bit softer. So you can always go ahead and this is what I call naked scrapbooking. You're just taking a solid base and putting your photos on there. So whether you want to use white, beige or black cardstock or white, uh, we've got white, Spargo natural and black album refill pages. You can easily get your photos onto those, get them into your albums. And of course, that is the whole goal. Then you can go ahead and just write on those, um, you know, with a black pen. Uh, if you wanted to add something, you know, like a title, you could go, oops, I'm going to lose my photos here. Uh, you could go ahead and just use letter stickers, you know, so in this case I could use some black letters on the white background. I could use white letters. These are all script white letters on the black background and I could go ahead and use some dark brown letters on the natural. So those are easy options if you cannot figure out a color scheme theme uh, that you want to use. All right, so let me just kind of clear this up here and let's actually do some scrapbooking now. Oh, I forgot to mention, this is one of my favorite tricks 
for naked scrapbooking. Okay. I love these little craft photo corners. And if you're thinking that it's really boring, you know, just putting your photos here on the page, then you might want to think here, let's just use two just for, just for a little bit more ease of getting these organized. But if you think that that's just a little bit boring, take some of these craft photo corners and just add them literally to the corners of your photos. They do have an adhesive back, so they're sticking to my page, or sticking to my finger there. Let me get these on really quick. And not only will that help you uh, adhere your photos, but it will delineate the edges and the corners. It'll make your photos stand out just a little bit, okay? And you've got a really nice design element without really doing too much extra work. So really, if you're thinking about just naked scrapbooking, uh, I would definitely recommend the craft photo corners um, along with your solid pages. They look great on um, the black, the white, the natural. Let me just show you on the black as well. I think they're great. And I think they're a, a secret of scrapbooking for sure. So let's just put that down so you can see how great that would look. So lots of options, even if you don't think that you can come up with a color scheme. All right, so let me find the photos that I want to use again. One, two, take off the little corner and four. All right, those are the photos we're gonna use. So let's talk about patterns, collections, that kind of thing. So as I mentioned, outdoor photos, camping, if we look, we can identify some blues, some greens, lots of those kinds of, you know, brown tones. It was moving into the fall. Uh, Grayson has a kind of a brighter red on. So as we look, we can see a lot of those colors here. But let's think about what products I might want to use for this. So I could look over here, um, maybe leave nothing behind because it's an outdoor themed collection. I would be able to pick up a lot of the greens and the browns, maybe golden harvest because it's fall. Uh, maybe I want to use something like one of the new collections like set up camp so I can pull out. I love these sort of photo sheets, the, the photos of the papers inside each of the paper packs, because that way I can, again, it's sort of like looking in the um, catalog or online. I can get a really quick overview of the colors that are there. And this one isn't too, too bad, but you know, I'd really like to bump up the red. So I think that I might go with Golden Harvest. So even just putting that cover sheet next to my photos, you can start to see how it all starts working together. I've got the reds. I've got the kind of orangey tones, the brown tones. I've got some of the greens and the kind of the yellows there. So, and I've even got some blue, his little cap and his blue jeans there. Again, the browns. So right away, I can see that even though set up camp would work because there are some colors there, once I put down that Golden Harvest cover sheet, I can really see that that's the products that I want to use. So let's get started scrapbooking now that we've determined that that's what we want to use. And of course, our next question is how are we going to arrange our photos? You know, what, what are we going to do on the page? So I've pulled a, a simple sketch and you remember at the beginning of our lesson or our video or time together today, I mentioned about virtual crops. And this is a sketch from the virtual crop in March. Okay. And we have a virtual crop every month. And this year, what we've been doing is we've been providing you with two single page sketches and two double page sketches. And if you haven't joined us for a virtual crop, you can find these by going to the blog, the Creative Memories blog. So let me flip you back to our, um, to our website here. And we're just gonna go up to the very top. We looked at all those beautiful paper packs and you see the blog right here. Just give it a second to load. 
Oh, isn't that a fun layout by Sachi? Love that. That's what set up camp right there. So again, great place for lots and lots of uh, inspiration. But here where it says categories, I just want you to go down to select categories. And then at the very bottom of that list, you'll find virtual crops. So there's a list of all of our virtual crops we've had so far this year. And I mentioned that this one was from March. So we just go and we continue reading. Okay. And then right here, you'll see a blue button. Download the PDF for March virtual crop sketch challenges. And of course, there's, you know, you've even got pictures of the same sketches as well. So that's the place that you'll want to go to get those sketch ideas. And this is the one that I'm going to use. So I just blown it up here so that we can see it a little bit better. But we've got four photos. You can even see the photo sizes. So these photos are standard four by six, six by four, horizontal and vertical photos. So I'm gonna have to trim them down a little bit. And then it looks to me as I'm looking at this page, I've got just a regular base page. So I could use whatever I want. I could use a piece of solid cardstock in you know one of the colors that we're gonna pick out or I could use a pattern, which we're gonna talk about in a second. And then I also need some additional papers, paper strips up here. Again, it gives me the, the dimensions. So I need half of a four inch square here, half of a four inch square here. So I know that I need a four inch square of some other paper. Then I need a couple of these banner sort of shapes, these strips, uh, six and a half and another six and a half. So I'm gonna need a little bit more paper for that. And one more piece that's going to be five and a half by half inch. So I'm going to need my base page, a square, and two different banners. So I'm going to need four papers. So how do you pick those papers? What are the rules? And you'll see sometimes that, you know, there's, there's suggestions and people will say, well, you know, have a small scale, have a, have a large scale, etc. I'm going to make it easy for you. You're just going to pick four different papers that go with the colors of your photos that are from the same collection. Okay. That's all you need to worry about. Here's a secret. The designers do all the work for you. So this particular pattern, for example, let's see if I can get it up close enough because I think I've used all of that, but that particular pattern features all of these colors. So if you use this and this and this and this, you can't go wrong because all of the colors are working together. Now, sometimes a good rule of thumb is if you use a busy pattern with lots of little uh, designs on it. Let's see what I have left here. Okay, so a plaid, for example. If you use a pattern with a lot of busyness or tightly placed together uh, designs and icons, I was hoping I had the little um, pumpkins because that's a great one to show you. I think I've used it all. Oops. Yeah, I think I've used it all. But if I was going to use that little pumpkin paper, okay, can you see how tightly all of those little tiny pumpkins go together? then I wouldn't want to use another busy pattern next to it. So I would want to choose something that is a little bit less busy. So those are the things to kind of keep in mind. Apart from that, you can use whatever you want from that same collection. So let's go ahead, first of all, and pick a background paper. Now I have mostly the tonal papers here. So there's beautiful red. I like that with those photos. I like that sort of yellow with the photos. So I'm going to set that paper aside. It's the same one. You can get rid of that. This one doesn't really do much for any of the photos. It's got some green leaves, but nothing too, too fancy. Uh, and this green here, I might use because it does pick up some of the green. So I might use that in just a little sort of dose. Uh, I've got blue jeans. That would be kind of nice. And that's a really nice neutral on the back. Look at that. It's kind of like a canvas. So I might use that for my base page. What else have I got? I've got a great wood grain, which I love. A wood grain is always a great neutral. And then I've got a darker wood grain, which would be nice, but it is a little bit dark. 
but oh, I really like this with the leaves on the back. So that might even be a better red than I first chose. So I think I'll keep this red out. These are duplicates. So let's see what we've got here. If I went with these three sort of colors and patterns, I wish I had some of the, oh, hang on. Where's that dark brown? I think the dark brown has the orangey color on the back. Nope, it's gone. It fell and it's gone. So, but yeah, the, the dark brown that has the orange on the back would be a nice, um, a nice color to choose, but I don't have that one. So I will maybe bring in some of these more orangey colors in some of my uh, embellishments. All right, so I'm going to use this canvas sort of paper as my base. And then I'm going to use these three for my for my accent colors. So you can see just by putting all of these papers next to your printed photos, you can start to see how it will all work together. So that's why I suggest printing your photos before you actually choose your papers. Because again, sometimes looking online or looking at your phone and then comparing it to your photos, it's not always true. A lot can uh, change based on your photo printer whether you print at home or you bring them to a um, to a developer, okay? So print your photos and then get out your product. All right, so let's have a look here. Remember our sketch showed that we've got a, a, a vertical and we've got two horizontals and we've got another vertical. Well, I've only got horizontals now. So maybe I, because these ones are kind of similar, maybe I'm just going to use one of these. Okay. I like this one a little bit better. So I'm just going to use those and I'm going to pull in for my other, uh, vertical photo. I'm going to pull in one of my cards. So this one's quite cute. A little maple leaf. Autumn holds a wonder all of its own. I've got some other ones. This one's nice because it's got a little spot for my journaling. Sweater weather, not specifically something I, I want to focus on. And then we've got some things. So I think one of these two. Okay. And as again, as I look, I really like how this one has some lights and darks and it pulls in the other colors. Now, when I'm arranging my photos, I start looking at the way that the photos are. And I don't like the way that Grayson is kind of looking off the page. So I'm just going to switch these first of all before I do any sort of cropping. And I like the way that that looks. So he's kind of looking at things. I can put a title and my journaling up there. And then let's decide what we want for, or which, which papers and patterns we want to use. So I think I'm gonna use the red as my triangles there. And then I'm gonna have little strips of the green and yellow. So let's go ahead and do that. First of all, we're going to cut a four inch square from our red paper. I'm just going to go four inches and then another four inches. This is our 12 inch trimmer. And you might have noticed that I was pushing down on the blade. It's a great blade because it's, it's totally safe. So I can't cut myself on the blade. It has to be pressed in uh, by the, the little notch that's in the housing. So you have to put it in the housing and then press it down to actually, um, to actually cut anything. So it's very safe and beautiful to use. Cuts like butter. I know people say that, but it really is true. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half into my triangles. So we've got a couple of things on this trimmer that will help. You can see this 45 degree line, okay? So you know that if you have one side along the 45 degree line, you're gonna get that nice triangle. There's also lines printed on the cutting mat. So I want to line up the top corner and the bottom corner of my square on the cutting mat. And then I wanna keep that one edge along my 45 degree line. And that's pretty much going to guarantee me a beautiful straight cut. And I've got my two triangles really easily. Let's just set this aside. 
And what I'm doing now is just called dry fitting or, uh, you know, sort of arranging, dry arranging, or some people will even call it auditioning, which I love that term because you're sort of testing everything to see how it looks together. So yeah, that's coming together really nicely. It's going to pick up the reds here, the reds in the photo here. So I'm, I'm really liking that. Now, again, I've got uh, kind of the dark. Oh, see, that is the, the back of the wood grain. I thought it was orange on the back, but I've got a wood grain that I could choose from here, which is the back side of this paper. I've also got the yellow and green that I also chose. So I'm thinking now that I see this, there's less green in here than the kind of the warm colors. The greens are mostly here in these two photos and they almost kind of fade into the background. So although I do have a green that will work, I'm kind of leaning now towards the brown and the yellow for my banner strips. I think it'll just kind of work together and all of those colors are nice and warm. They're on the warm side of the of the spectrum. So let's see. I've got enough here. What's my measurement of this piece here? Yeah, I've got an uh, almost, well, an eight inch piece. So I could cut two uh, six and a half inch uh, banners from that. And then I'll use my yellow as my accent for the smaller banners. So there we go. I've got six and a half and I need one and a half. So six and a half by one and a half. Let's just cut those two strips. There's one and another one. So this is scrap now. Okay. I haven't trimmed my photos yet. Remember, we still have to do that. And then my other banner strip, I know I'm going to use my yellow. It's going to be five and a half by half inch. So what I'm going to do is cut a half inch strip and I'm going to use the markings on this side of my trimmer because I'm doing a small cut. Okay. And now I can cut that half inch strip into two five and a half inch pieces. So yeah, I'm liking the way that that's coming together. I'm liking all of those colors and patterns. And again, I really can't go wrong, even if I had chosen the green, because that's working all together in that uh, collection. Let's go ahead and trim these down really quickly. My photos. So each of them is going to be three and a half by five and a half. So when I'm cropping my photos, I like to use my little personal trimmer. Now, some people will use their 12 inch trimmer. Um, I just want to let you know that it will, um, it, it, you can certainly do that, but it will affect your blade just in terms of cutting through photo paper is a little bit different than cutting through regular paper. So you may notice that you have to change your blade more frequently. Okay. But you can use it. All right. And I do want to keep, uh, you know, a good amount of the the kind of, you know, the, the, the way that he's looking off into the distance. So I'm going to trim, I'm going to trim to about a quarter of an inch off each side here. And then I can take a quarter inch off the bottom. Now I'm just going to kind of eyeball this using the piece that I just trimmed. And another quarter of an inch. Usually I'm pretty close. You, I've seen other advisors and I've seen other scrapbookers kind of create a little extended ruler here so that they can easily measure. But I just usually eyeball it. it although this sketch says three and a half by five and a half, you can cut it to whatever size you want. All right, so here I'm just gonna actually kind of lay this on top. I'm gonna use it as a bit of a template. We can go ahead quarter inch there, quarter inch there. That brings us down to the, the three and a half quarter inch there and another quarter inch. And again, I can always kind of come back and use my little pieces that I've cut off to just check pretty darn close. Uh, let's go ahead and trim this one down. It's on the back, same thing, just different orientation. This is going to get a little bit smaller and a little bit more important that I get it uh, kind of in the center because I don't want to lose my design. 
So just trimming this quickly. I should have thought about ahead and actually had these all trimmed down, but hey, we're together and we're just scrapping as we go. Three and a half. And then again, I can do it off of either side, or in this case, it's it wasn't too, too bad in terms of if I cut it off of one end uh, of the photo, it wouldn't really have uh, affected what I see. Okay, so now we can go ahead and really start, start to see how this layout will come together. Get all my photos organized. And I like the fact that this is a really nice neutral background because again, it, the photos really stand out nicely on it. Okay, so before we cut our little um, banners, let's adhere our corners here. And I'm just using tape runner adhesive, which is a refillable adhesive product. There's just these little cartridges. They just drop onto the pins here. Okay, and then the cover goes on. And so when you run out, you can just uh, add in a new refill. So you don't have to keep buying a new case each time. It's on my finger there. All right. And you just need a little dab. So I pull it towards me and then I twist my wrist to kind of stop the flow of adhesive. I'm just using the edges of my pages to arrange that. And then again, I'm just going to eyeball where I want my photos to go. Now, if you've noticed my background here, the work surface, this is our 13 by 13 inch cutting mat. And when you place your 12 inch paper onto the 13 by 13 inch cutting mat, you can still see the measurements around the edge. So this way I can use the measurements and try to get my photos in the right place. It's definitely um, a handy tool and it makes a quick work of getting everything sorted. So I can see that I need to move these over just a bit. Okay, and then I can go ahead and adhere my photos as well. So this is coming together pretty quick. As I'm just adhering these, I do want to mention uh, some of the benefits of using our creative memories, papers, and cardstock. So if you are printing your photos and going to all of this, you know, work, if you want to call it work, it's, it's definitely a pleasurable hobby to have, but you are putting effort into this and you want these pages to last. So you want to make sure that your scrapbook tools and products are going to be photo safe. And what we mean by photo safe is that none of the components in the paper or in the adhesive or in the inks that you use will damage or deteriorate your photos. Photos will deteriorate on their own and that's just because they're printed onto paper, people are touching them, uh, but you want to try to alleviate that as much as possible. So all of Creative Memories papers are acid free. Acid, of course, is the enemy of photos. It will literally eat into the photos. Um, they are lignin-free. Lignin is a, a fiber or, a, I guess, a tissue in plants that uh, speeds up the yellowing of photos. So you don't want any lignin in your papers either because that will start to make your photos yellow. And then it's also buffered, uh, and the cardstock in particular, because that's got a neutral alkaline coating or additive added, and that will help counteract any acidity that is in the photos or that it encounters, you know, by people touching it, the oils in their skin, etc. okay? All right, so that's just my little quick, you know, photo safety recommendation. So you can be, um, you know, you can feel good knowing that all of the papers, all of the cardstock that Creative Memory sells, all of the inks, all of the adhesive is not going to hurt your photos. It's going to help preserve them for as long as the lifespan of the photos. Now you notice that I was just stacking my two little papers here because we're going to just cut a little banner strip. Okay, you notice that this has a nice little fish tail here. Fish tail, dovetail, banner strip, 
whatever you want to say. So there's a couple ways you can cut them. And I like to cut them together because then both pieces will match. So I can cut up sort of right into the center and then come in from the corners. But the easiest way for me, maybe it's because I've been doing this for years, but I just fold the corners together and then I cut up from the corner and into the center. And then I have these perfect little fishtail banners every time. And again, because I stacked them, they're gonna match. So let's do that again. And with this skinny little strip, we may not be able to fold them together very easily. Let's see if we can. I'm all fingers. It's pretty tight, but there we go. A little fold and a little snip and we've got our banner. So those are just gonna go over like that. And I think I'll put it on the bottom here. Okay, so that's looking good. You could put it on the top if you want, but if you wanna follow the sketch, it's got it on the bottom. Let's adhere those super fast. Just again, a couple little dabs, get into the corners there. And we're almost done. So we've really spent a lot of time, of course, together talking about how we choose all of these wonderful colors and papers and themes. But now we've put together a layout in just a matter of, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes all together. And again, fast and fun. That's what we do every, um, every Wednesday here, uh, both on the Creative Memories Virtual Crop Facebook group and the YouTube channel. And we come up with fun and fast ideas, fast and fun ideas to get your, um, you know, your, your photos, your layouts done quickly and easily. So that's pretty much done. You can see that that is the sketch. And I've got some golden harvest. I've got beautiful leaves here. I don't have all the die cuts. I've used up quite a bit. So here's some green, funnily enough. So that might work to um, to bring in some of the green. I've already got a kind of a cutout here that I could use, bring in. Looks like I've cut off part of that, so that's not the best. I've got a pretty little um, wood slice title that could work, but you know, let's grow old together. It doesn't really work there. So I'll probably just stick with some pretty leaves. Let's see what we've got. That's the yellow. Let's bring in some more of the orange maybe. There we go. Not that one. And then I can bring in again some more orange up here. So maybe those two. Okay. Now I don't have my stickers here, but with my Golden Harvest stickers, I most likely would be able to find a little title that I could add there and then uh, just do some of my journaling or I could put my title sticker over here uh, just like it shows. So again, it's, it's once you get your photos down, it's really going to be up to you in terms of how you arrange it, where you place all of those things. But we've got four different patterns here. We've got the neutral back, we've got the red, we've got the dark brown wood grain and we've got the yellow um, check and all of them work together because they're all from the same collection, okay? And again, even though we were camping, the fall collection worked better in terms of the colors and patterns rather than the theme. So that's it. I think we've covered a heck of a lot today, and I hope your brain isn't you know, feeling like it's gonna explode, but Really, the, the big tips that I want to leave you with are to start by printing your photos. Uh, anytime you're looking to create a layout, start by printing your photos. Have a look at those photos next to products, next to color cardstock swatch, uh, swatches, next to the title pages from uh, your products. Pull out your pattern paper. See what works with it. I think starting with your printed photos is always going to push you in a direction or pull you in a direction that will work best with the photos. If you sort of started with your collection, and, and sometimes I do, sometimes I love a product so much that I have to start with it and I want to create a layout right now. 
and then I go find photos that will work with it. But when you start with your photos, you can always pull in the colors, the theme, the pattern, all right? So with themes, remember to make sure to use those two tools we talked about, your catalog, your Creative Memories catalog, which you can get from your advisor or order yourself a copy online, and the Creative Memories website, but don't just look at what's new on the website or, or you know what you could buy, but make sure you go through all of those uh, paper packs because the color swatches will really jump out at you. With colors, definitely think about you know making yourself uh, a little color wheel or making yourself little you know swatches so that you can quickly and easily look at the colors of the cardstock next to your photos. And then when it comes to patterns, definitely use patterns. Don't be afraid to use patterns, especially when they're in the same um, collection, okay? And I do have, I did pull out, I did pull out a couple things that I wanna mention really, really fast. If you're not a very, um, if, you're, if you don't love patterns, definitely think about the totally tonals because they have very subtle, tone on tone patterns. So if you're not a big fan of, you know, bright patterns, multicolored patterns, definitely look at the totally tonals because you're going to get some more subtle patterns in a variety of colors there. And the last tool that I want to mention because it's a brand new in this last month or so and I think it's invaluable is on all of the new paper pack inserts starting with Sweet Summer which came out at the beginning of May. Is that right? We've had so many collections already since then, but pretty sure it came out the beginning of May. You're going to find the cardstock colors that match the collection listed right there. So that is yet another tool you've got to go back to and make sure that everything is coordinating and matching. So We've done a lot of the work for you, and it, hopefully that makes it easy for you to pick your colors, your patterns, as well as your themes. All right? Okay. So I'm, I haven't been able to really look at those um, comments as they're coming in, but I will try to go back through them, see if there's any questions. But I want you to start thinking ahead now to our next time together, which will be, as I'm looking here, it will be Friday, June 30th. So just ahead of the 4th of July and uh, Canada Day uh, celebrations. Noon CT, Friday, June uh, 30th, noon CT. And we're going to talk about photos. So we did do quite a bit of work with our photos here today, but we're going to talk about how to organize photos. We're going to talk about cropping photos. We're going to talk about taking photos, printing photos, all of that kind of stuff. We're going to talk about uh, a little bit what I alluded to there about making photos from disparate events and disparate times work together to tell stories. So we're going to really focus on our photos. So your homework for next time is to go through your photos uh, and think about a few that you want to definitely scrapbook. There might be some historical or family heritage photos that you want to scrapbook. There might be some of your kids when they were little and they said, you know, funny things or did funny things that you want to scrapbook. Find some of those important photos and set those aside until we get together next time and so that we can talk about the importance of our photos and how we can really make them the star of our scrapbook pages. Okay? All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Oh, man, we went even over an hour today. We were at uh, an hour and 10 minutes. But again, so, so much information. I hope you can go back and kind of watch it in smaller chunks so that you can digest it a little bit easier. Uh, and hopefully those, you know, three big tips that I left you with there uh, help you create your scrapbook layouts, uh, especially if you are a beginner and you're not quite sure how to do all of this, how to select those things. So remember those tips I gave you and good luck and, and have fun going through your photos for next time. And we'll talk more again in uh, just, just, a, just over a month, Friday, June 30th, noon CT. All right. Thanks, everybody, for spending the time with me on this lovely Friday morning. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk with you soon. Don't forget to join me next Wednesday right here again for our next Fast and Fun project with Noreen as well. Okay? Bye-bye for now, everyone.